Welcome. Today I want to do a, a video on my hobo stove. But I want to talk about some other things that relate to it. As you can see in my background, Puget Sound is just out behind me. I'm just a few miles south of the Canadian border here in North America. Not long ago there was a very bad earthquake in Japan and it created a, a large tsunami that made it all the way here to North America. Well, before I get into that, all, all of that story, let me say that this is impromptu. It's not rehearsed, so I'm just going to talk to you. Um, let me also say I'm not selling anything. The ideas here are free for you to use or to sen synthesize with other ideas that you have and uh, give you the opportunity to make something that might work for you. Now, before I get into the earthquake and the tsunami, and Puget Sound that's right behind here. Let me say that I have lots of small, being an old long distance backpacker, I have lots of, I have lots of small propane camp stoves. But after that big earthquake in Japan, I begin to think, well, what would happen if I couldn't get that propane or some other kind of fuel for my stove? what's all around me here in North America that I could use for fuel in, in the event of an emergency. And I started looking at videos, and I want to thank all those people that have created them, but I started looking at videos on YouTube about hobo stoves. And this is my synthesis of, of that. Just behind me, if you look out in the haze, it's kind of hard to see today, you can see Vancouver Island, British Columbia. And just beyond that, there is a fault called the Cascadia Fault. And it is every, big, every bit as big as the fault that created the earthquake in Japan. And in fact, a big earthquake from that fault is overdue. The last one was in 1700. And it was such a big earthquake that it was recorded in village towns along the coast in Japan at that time. It also destroy, destroyed large forests and all kinds of, of habitat along the coast here. It's a major event that became the subject of local native folklore. So there's the possibility of having a huge tsunami and earthquake here just as well. But I also like the outdoors and I also like camping and so one of my motives here was to build a little bitty hobo stove that I could use when I go to have fun. But let's go through what I have here and I'll explain it to you in this first chapter. First, you need fuel. And this is something I learned on the internet. I make these pellets, if you want to call it, these little pieces of, of limb. And I use a lopper, a large pruning shear, to cut them in this length. And then because I'm very frugal, I split them up. I suppose I could use my, my big, expensive hand-forged tomahawk, but no need, no need. I have this, it's actually some kind of a martial arts thing that I got for less than a dollar at a, at a, at a sale, and it works beautifully. And essentially what I do is I take this pellet, this one's just about the right size, this is okay, these are a little bit small, and I split it, and I end up with these pieces just like this. Okay, and that works very well. To start the fire, I went to one of my big box stores. I found where they were selling discount for $2.50, a 50 gallon sack of these pellets, which are used for pellet stoves. And you know what this is. A little paraffin, a little of those pellets in here, and I've got a wonderful fire starter. A lot of you also know that you can do this and it'll work very well in a stove like that. Cotton and guess what, Vaseline. All simple, inexpensive, available things that you can use to run a, to start a hobo stove. I have now, I cut up a bunch of old milk crates and I now have almost 10, I'm sorry, milk cartons. I cut up a bunch of milk cartons and I now have almost 10 gallons of, of this fuel and I can have it uh, stored and ready to use in the event that I need it or I can just use it for fun. So let's put away some of these tools now and let me explain to you what I did. 
First of all, let me say this entire project cost me less than ten dollars. The first part of it was to go to a Goodwill store or a thrift store or St. Vincent's de Paul and find an old pot, which I did. And you can see I put a lot of holes in it. But then there was a problem. You want to elevate your your heat up a little bit, up above the bottom of the stove. So I went to a hardware store and for about a dollar I got these things which are used to attach two by fours together. And that creates an opportunity for venting underneath. This is a park full of people and you can hear people having a wonderful time here today. Uh, there's a barbecue going over there, people having lunch on both sides of me. But that could all change if there were a big earthquake or a tsunami. So this is kind of a fun way to, to have fun camping and also have something that I could use in any situation. This cost me about two dollars. Of course I had to drill the holes. Now, I have these grates, but I'll probably use this one. This is the one that I think I'll want to use. Um, but I have these grates set inside like that. You can see in there and that'll hold things up as well. I can also use this as a barbecue by putting this on top. You can see how that is. That'll bake for a very good barbecue and you could use typical barbecue briquettes to fuel that. But my principal purpose for this was to create a hobo stove that would last a little longer than one made out of a peach can or a tomato juice can. And also one that was kind of the right size that it would work for things that I want to do. Got these and if you know what these are, these are for gutters. Put a couple holes in the top so you don't have to use this. What you do is just simply put these three in here like this after your fire is going good. And that will hold any pot that you have or any any other thing. This is my favorite pot for camping and you can see it would sit on there perfectly fine. I also happen to think a lot of old black skillets and this would make a great cheese, uh, melted cheese sandwich, fry an egg or anything like that. And that'll sit right up on there and it's not going to fall off. You could also use something like this. And that's not going to have to boil water. If you want to live on raw men, that's your choice, but I really prefer to have something that would be a little bit more enjoyable. And that's basically it. This is the first chapter, and I want to thank you for watching. If you have any recommendations or suggestions, please let me know. I always like to hear from people. The next chapter of this will be actually cooking something out of this pot. And we'll do that in the next chapter. Thank you for looking at my system and uh, taking the time to uh, take a look at my video.